doesn't matter. Uh, the quote from Gwendolyn Brooks is, we are each other's harvest. We are each other's business. We are each other's magnitude and bond. Do you teach that, Michelle, in your classes? <laughs> <laughs> no, what do you teach in your classes? Um, uh, about fun and looks, I always teach bean eaters, I always teach We Real Cool, and I love it to play the video, well, not, it's not a video, it's an audio of her, um, she, she announces to the audience that she's going to read We Real Cool, and they all clap and get excited, and then she says, I don't really like that poem, but mm -hmm. everybody seems to. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and then I kind of, I kind of feel out, um, probably the rest of it, like how uh, political I'll take the polls. Mm -hmm. um, like, uh, there's one, I forget what it's called, so one called Beverly Hills, or something like that. But I liked, uh, the, the website I used to use all the time is an American Academy of the Poets. It's a great website that has poets reading of poems from a whole gamut and essays written by other poets on poets, and it's an amazing resource if you're in a poetry mood someday to just go to. And that's what I normally, with my, to get poetry, because it's free, it's for educators, that's what I use, instead of making them buy a bunch of expensive books. Mm -hmm. I know that's yeah. terrible being a writer, but I don't really make money off my books, so. <laughs> <laughs> what class level do you teach? Or what do you teach? Well, um, but I teach a lot of freshmen, but I, I also teach like African American lit. And then in creative writing, I teach, mm -hmm. you know. Undergrads. Yeah, undergrads. That's all right. undergrads. Where do you teach? USC Sumter. So one of their branch and campuses. Hmm? You teach at Len. Isn't where Len also teaches? Yeah, Len teaches there now. I have a question that's a little bit off the subject. Is the storytelling time that was significant 10 or 15 years ago at some point, has that sort of died? I don't hear much of it. Well, um, I used to direct the center, and I did retire from that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I carved out some space for myself, and, and they haven't had the festival since, oh. um, since I Thank gave you. it up. So, she's a, she's a I'm, I'm so I feel that, a yeah. little guilty yeah. answering that question. Yeah. <laughs> but. Thank you. I, I, I hadn't seen anything that was going on, and I, I'm rather gathered that actually, that it somehow sort of got It's still itself. there, and Ray McManus is the director now, mm -hmm. and they changed uh, the Center for Oral Narration to the Center of Oral Narrative, okay. but we haven't had a storyteller there since he took over, so. I've, I've been working, Francis, on a, a, a list poem about occupations. Great. And so I was interested to hear the casting call. As a matter of fact, I asked my husband and told Lance today, would you, because I don't see it with my eyes anymore, so would you just describe what businesses are on this street now? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so to hear the post, uh, pastry chef and um, something started with an F. It's all the variety, and the point is, and I hear kids, um, some kids, maybe it's different, but with very narrow career goals, lawyer, doctor, engineer, veterinarian, musician, and there's this whole wide range of uh, yoga studio <laughs> owners and trash junk collectors and uh, anyway, why did you, was that hard to do a, a list poem? Uh, or did it give you pleasure doing it? It actually took me about 10 minutes to Oh, that's it. right, that's right. You said and, it. and a one 200, so if I could make that much. <laughs> 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 wow, that would be nice. <laughs> no, so, so it was just one of those poems that just, R.C. left the room and it, the, the poem just came pouring 
whatever. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Does so, that happen much? It happens sometimes. Uh, and um, then a, a poem that I didn't read um, that I brought, um, I wrote in a class with Carol Ann Davis, and it was very much a constructed poem. She gave me different things had to be in this poem. Mm -hmm. And that was great. But what I found, and I don't know if you've ever done the Poem a Day Challenge in National Poetry Month April. I know about it, but no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, April's too busy. <laughs> yeah, so the last two years I've attempted it. I haven't been 100% successful. Okay. But yet the thing is, the, the rules I make for myself is they don't have to be good poems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can be really bad poems. I can do haiku three of the days of the month <laughs> if my brain is to start. And I've never, been, again, this, this year I managed 23 days out of 30. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing how when it's 10 minutes to midnight, you're all, oh, I didn't write my poem today. <laughs> how you can, have, it's because you're just rushing to get it out how sometimes you can come out with better things than when you're thinking about, mm -hmm. okay, what should I include mm -hmm. in this? And if you just let it all just come out, then, um, you can come with some, up with some amazing stuff. But there are so, certainly a lot of the 23 days that, yeah, that stuff is never going to see the light of day. Curious, <laughs> uh, Kwame Dawes issued a 100-day haiku. Oh. And um, he will critique your haikus. There are some um, parameters about it. But another thing he said, Sparkle Mary, and my photography friends in here, the photography friends say, don't get ready, be ready. <laughs> and for those moments, and Kwame Dawes talked about that and the rigor of doing exercises like that to keep your poetry muscles in toned and ready mm -hmm. so that when um, like that samurai poem, kind of, it, it just, it'll flow. Um, I, so it's like practicing piano or a tennis swing, just getting the rhythm. Anyway, he too said, it doesn't have to be a good poem. It just has to, don't let that contain you. Just write the words. Now, I'm wondering, I, I so admire people who can <coughs> perform their poetry the way you do. Is that, does that require a lot of practice, or are you, do you have a memory that just retains things? <laughs> that's so easy. I'm oh, just a genius, that's all I remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we have her here. I <laughs> that's why I can't do it. No. Um, well, first, since I, um, I no longer see with my eyes, I see with my ears, so I am more attuned mm. to listening. But I appreciated Al's offer to do this so that it would stretch me, so that the only time I've done before um, was memorize the one poem, a poem in a, this poem, and I was just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I talked to a thespian, and you know, how do you memorize it? And and I am trying to learn Braille. I am learning Braille. I finished the first so that I can read to our grandchildren. We have one due in just within a week <laughs> on her time frame. However, I found uh, with this challenge and with Lance's support, I thought, and Al set the parameters too, 12 minutes. I thought, hey, why not? Just, yeah. just try it. Mm -hmm. And the downside is, when you're speaking it, it takes, it's like, oh, why did I put that there? I need to take that line out. Put it in, put that in, put that in. About constantly changing bad, bad, bad. <laughs> so, but I did it as a girl. Um, we competed. That was one of the things at school at the Clamatory Meets. So we went to little towns around. And then in Austin, I graduated from high school, we did compete. So, but I have not done it. I have not done it since. Fifty years. <laughs> okay. Thirty-five, forty years. Okay. So. I have a question, Anne. Yeah. Uh, in the poem about the shed. Mm. Where were you when you wrote it, and what time frame did you write it in? That 
poem came from a prompt from a writing workshop I attended for the first time. Betsy, are you still here? She may not be. She left. Um, with some friends uh, at Walford. And it's put on, and the professor, who was Emily Roscoe, who directs the MFA program in Charleston, led us. And she gave us the prompt. Um, I think it was on aging something, and it was so, so it is a new poem, and it came to me because she made me do it, and Kwame Daw said that too. She said, I'll give you 15 minutes, you're going to make a poem, and again, the rigor, or I'll give you two hours, and come out with a poem. Now, that, that's a rough draft of a poem. So that poem is maybe a month old, oh. and it's based on a conversation a, a, a tour I had with my dad of that particular shed because I remember when he built it about 25 years ago and the energy and he's you know he's 25 years older now yeah. and there's the cobwebs and the broken but then my brother showed up and fixed everything uh -huh. and it's just you know I can just see them out working with the saw and the ladder and talking with each other it's a wonderful <laughs> image I hope it portrayed the magical part of um, what it, they become, what the shed became as children played in it. You know, we all had sheds yeah. or duck playhouses. When well, it brought me back to the childhood, did it? Yeah. We had a shed in the backyard, <laughs> and the last time I saw it, it was falling down yeah. and brought up memories back. We had a lot of good times in that shed. <laughs> well, you had to see. <laughs> The turkeys lived in one end of it. Uh, <laughs> you could borrow our brothers and fix it up. <laughs> <laughs> you, had, you had a great line of that, and tired of waiting for purpose in that form. Oh, it was just yeah. a great one. Thank you. Who's that speaking? Is that Tim? Tim. I Tim. thought it was yeah. Steve. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Thank you for coming. Hey, I'm not too sure you weren't going to see my dad's shed when he wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I got that was his shed. You know, the spider's my favorite. <laughs> and the uh, rusty things hanging. And us going in and straightening it up. Yeah, you were there. <laughs> oh, God, that had a resonance. Your poem on the Samurai brought me back when I was stationed for 42 days in Yokota Air Base, which is near Yokohama. And the, uh, what kind of nice place, uh, it was in 70, it was either 69 or 70. And it was kind of hard to pick from the Japanese, they used to call it uh, U number 10 GI, and number 10, from 1 to 10, that pretty darn bad. Mm -hmm. Are they called the Gajin, or some word like that? means corner in that country. Mm -hmm. brought that back. Mm -hmm. Several of us, about 14 of us, were uh, working on a C-5 airplane, and they told us to, to take those technicians how to work on the C-5 airplane, and they dumped us there for 42 days. I didn't like that very much, <laughs> and I had to Tell Shield to give her a call and say, hey, I'm not coming home. Are you going to be here for about two months? Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. I like your depiction of the Missouri. Is the University of Missouri at Columbia? <laughs> is it on, what river is it on? Um, well, it's a little way from the Missouri River. But um, you know, I, I hike with nature photographers and anybody just about take me. <laughs> and the limestone and you know all of that was so so familiar. And also the gravel. What did what was the word you said about gravel? The gravels. <coughs> what did the gravel do to the little bunnies? That was a good verb. And I liked your desiccated. Did you use the word desiccated? I, I like that one too. But anyway, um, just the freedom on the bicycle. 
Do you guys, I, I was thinking about the um, Brooks quote. Um, not only it looked kind of like, it looked like in that poem she's like playing with language, it's like a list of language. Do you have like a word like that where you're like, oh, I want to use that in a poem? Yes. And do some of that like, oh, let's just make good sounding words in a poem? Absolutely. Um, I took a <laughs> class with Paul Allen, a little workshop with Paul Allen at South Carolina Rutledge's workshop conference many years ago. And one of the things we did was we picked out words because of their sound, and then you had to take, I think, like five of those and use them in a poem. Do you ever do that? Oh, well, I did just recently do something <laughs> like that. I, I don't play too much with language except in editing. Right. Not to write, but. Do you use prompts, or do you just, what is your way of coming up with your poems? How are they born? Um, See, I can't do what Kwame does. I once taught a workshop and Kwame was sitting in the back of the room and, he, and then he wrote this poem and like, so I'm like, I'm done, I'm done. And he also talks about how he writes in the bathroom. And I'm like, I can't write in the bathroom. My children come in the bathroom, so do my dogs. So like, there's no way. Uh, but I, so I actually, I write a lot when I'm biking or running or swimming or mowing the lawn because and and that's I find cadences there and so I have to keep it in my head and I find the lines before I sit down. I have to have it written in my head before I hit paper. Wow. But that's just me. So I'm sitting in a workshop, they give me a prompt, I'm like, I'm sitting still. <laughs> How am I supposed to write a poem? <laughs> Betsy Thorne, who was here, says she loves a poem with an unusual word. It makes her go to the dictionary, look it up. A cardiothoracic sac that uh, you had in there. Oh, uh -huh. so uh -huh. yeah. I've never heard that in a poem before. <laughs> I have um, accounting words. I have a poem too. Um, with Denver Phrenologist. I was um, in Scotland and heard on a BBC show the word Denver Phrenologist, which is somebody who studies <laughs> tree greens. And I fell in love with the word. And even though people are always saying, don't use long Latinate words in your poems, use short Anglo Saxon words. I just loved that. And it took me a few years to come up with a poem to include that, but I eventually did. TSL is just proof. I'm not a T.S. Eliot fan, but you know, you need a dictionary and an encyclopedia to read T.S. Eliot. Thank God for Google. <laughs> it, it, it's, the care is in not sounding haughty, uh, but to me the care is opening a door for any of us, for me, um, to go, oh man, that's a good word, that's what I go for. Man, that's a good word. I have two poems, three poems in this comic book, and two words that were different. One is I heard in a podcast, poetry magazine podcast I listened to, and the word they used was planur. I thought, what the heck is that? And it's a man uh, who's an urban dweller, and, and feminists have also claimed it, planus. And then I thought, well, why aren't we all planurs? Uh, but so I, I went with what the scholars were saying, planus on me. So I was a woman uh, explore of the cityscape. And the other was called Hauda, H-O-W-D-A-H, which is that little carriage thing on the top of the elephant that you sit in, you pay a dollar to get in and ride around. Hauda, because I equated the bus that I rode to a blumbering elephant, so rocking along. Okay. I have two poems. Yeah, do you, you folks have other forms you want to share? Uh, uh, sure. We'll go. The last two poems. I am a native Texan. I am a dual citizen of Texas and the Hill Country, specifically, and um, South Carolina. My husband's born here, and his family's my family, obviously. Uh, however, um, <laughs> the floods in Texas, there have been some terrible terrible river floods. One near where my family lives, and it swept away a family of nine and a dog, and I wrote a long poem. That was in 2015. In 2016, the Brazos River flooded. 
that's in East Texas, and there's an image, there's an image my friends described to me uh, that was on the television about horses on the front porch during this downpour. So this one's called Nine Horses. Nine horses crowd a ranch house porch. Dozens of hooves scramble for purchase on the slick slope floor. Rumps buck as they stagger and shove to the side. Three more horses mount the steps. Eyes pelted with rain, hindquarters wrapped in white caps. From the seething river, conquistadors christen Brazos, her arms of God. Swollen, swollen chickens spin in whirlpools as boiling clouds pour their fury on soil packed hard from drought. Barn roofs look like books scattered on worn linoleum. To the east, whipping helicopters bank for panoramas of land leveled in all direction. To the west, desperate cowboys wave their hats at hundreds of steers streaming across Highway 290 to higher ground, herded by sirens and pinwheeling blue cruisers. Back in the studio, a silence chills the crew as footage freezes on islands of stranded cattle. Cuts to close-ups of rising currents as they climb the backs and swallow them, trapped against fences they can't jump. And it's a reality, all those carcasses. And there's nothing, nothing to do. Okay, the last poem is Thank you. If you can look online at that picture of the horses and the pictures of the cattle stranded and they're, you know, the mm -hmm. horns are getting all tangled. Okay, the last one was just printed in Emerus, the upstate journal out of Hub City. And our assignment is from Ed Madden to write a poem about what you want to be doing on the day that you die. What's going to be going on? So this one's called a Prayer for My Demise. Lan Lance wants me to do it off the top. I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, prayer for My Demise. When the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting mother, blows her whistle, game over, time's up, she'll send a small plane over Manhattan, trailing a banner that reads, way to go with my name, and send a handwritten note on engraved stationery to praise that I got it, it being the gift of free will. And when that time comes, I want to catch her in a, I want her to catch me in a sea of puppies and circus of children all named for me in a carousel of colors vying for my lap. And we will be on the grounds of my estate, which I will not have named for myself, but that would be in poor taste, which I will have placed in public trust, complete with conservation easements, from my cash award and unlimited use of gerunds as a Nobel laureate for not backing, not backing down from a proper fight and even provoking some. And my acceptance speech will go viral and displayed in the Smithsonian to inspire generations of young girls, their fathers, some brothers, and most mothers. Yes, that's how I see it. Good night. God bless. I love you all. <laughs>